My name is James Leeton and I head up the research at Carbon Tracker, a think tank aiming to align the financial markets with tackling climate change. Recently we teamed up with the ACCA to explore what a changing energy system might mean for how the reserves of coal, oil and gas are treated in financial reporting. This feeds into a growing debate around the potential for stranded assets which may not ultimately be able to provide the revenues the market currently assume that they will. The research was designed to provide a baseline of current standards and practice in this area and identify some areas for further investigation. Whilst this may not be a widespread issue now, the signs are it would be prudent to get ready for it. Accounting standards already have a way of dealing with the impairment of tangible assets, such as a power station. If a plant is retired earlier than previously planned, then the value can be subject to an impairment adjustment. This has been seen in US utilities, for example, where regulations and markets have shifted. Fossil fuel reserves are not treated in the same way, however, i.e. there's no obvious line in the balance sheet identifying them as an asset. This raises challenges about how to make the current assessment through costs or goodwill more visible so that changes are more obvious to the market. This has been likened to pension fund liabilities. Until it was realised that there were funding gaps, these company obligations were not included in the balance sheet. Nowadays, it's expected that the market takes into account these liabilities to ensure that they are covered. Standards need to evolve to reflect changes in the wider context, and the same needs to be developed for changes in our energy system. Our work has been focusing on the implications of reduced emissions for the financial system. First, we looked at stocks of coal, oil and gas in the ground and turned them into carbon. Then we looked at the carbon budget that equates to a level of emissions that restricts global warming below dangerous levels. By comparing the stocks to the budget, it became clear that the world already has far more reserves than could be burnt unmitigated if we're to meet emissions targets. This has been confirmed by the IEA in their World Energy Outlook. And as the OECD noted, this gives us a, a, a choice of whether there is an impact on the amount of fossil fuels we can use or whether, whether we have to try and operate in a world impacted by major climatic changes. At present, the information presented to the market does not help investors understand the potential range of outcomes. So why is this relevant to the market? We've demonstrated how the flows of capital in and out of an extractor's company are linked to the ongoing ability for emissions to continue unabated. A company will only receive revenues if there's a market for its product. And if the market subsides, this may lead to the price collapsing, causing the write down of existing assets. Mines at the wrong end of the cost curve will not be viable in the coal market experiencing such a structural decline. If these revenues do decline, then a company has to start making choices. It can't maintain current levels of dividend, debt servicing and capital expenditure. So either shareholders will see income fall, there's a risk of default on debt, or spending on finding and developing more reserves has to be curtailed. Given the huge overshoot of reserves compared to a carbon budget, it would seem logical to reduce capital expenditure on developing more mines and oil fields. Given the returns are under pressure anyway, as margins are being squeezed, investors are already starting to look at this issue. We're working with a group of institutional investors to engage with companies around their capital expenditure plans. This will challenge the assumptions underlying the business model of the companies, i.e. what price and demand levels are they expecting. Companies are starting to have to explain to investors how their business model will be adaptable to different outcomes going forward. This will be easier for diversified businesses than for pure coal companies, for example. We estimated that capital expenditure on finding and developing new coal, oil and gas reserves was around 674 billion in 2012. This means that over the next decade, up to $7 trillion would be spent if this level is maintained. Investors are starting to realise that this could be wasted capital if the market is changing. So what are we trying to do with this information? There's been a debate around a carbon bubble sitting on the stock markets. In other words, could the market finance more fossil fuels than ultimately we will burn if it's not getting these right signals on tackling climate change? We don't currently believe that the market would spot this kind of risk. It requires taking a step back and asking if all the plans of all the companies add up, can they all really continue to grow and be profitable in a low carbon future? We want to prevent this bubble inflating and then ultimately bursting. 
if the markets continue to finance fossil fuels and then suddenly have to adjust to drastic action by governments prompted by extreme weather events, this could happen. This is why the market needs more information on the assumptions underlying the goodwill attributed to reserves. There are obviously events which prompt a valuation of a company, such as mergers or acquisitions, or the listing of a company on the stock exchange. Accountants need to be ensuring they are factoring in all the risks to future valuation during these processes. There are already a network of interconnected standards being applied to extractive companies. The accounting standards, financial regulations and industry standards. The regional and international bodies for these types of organisation already cross-reference each other. Yet there's an absence of explicit recognition of carbon and climate issues in these approaches. A group of standards are emerging around carbon reporting and integrated reporting, yet rarely are these mandatory requirements which are seen as material for financial reporting. We therefore think future reporting standards have to bring out information in two main areas. Firstly, some quantification of the carbon that will need to be emitted if the value is to be realised from fossil fuel reserves. And secondly, some explanation of how a company's business model can adapt to different future energy and emissions scenarios. I'll now run through some of the specific areas we suggested for further consideration by different actors involved in this area. From companies, we would like to see as a basic indicator reserves converted into potential carbon dioxide emissions. This enables both understanding of relative exposure across peers, as well as a systemic view of overall exposure for the regulator. Companies could also produce a sensitivity and analysis of reserves viability in different price demand scenarios. This is already optional in the United States, although it's not linked to climate and emission scenarios. Similarly, in the US, companies publish a single point valuation of reserves using their own assumptions. A range of valuations could be provided using the sensitivity analysis. We would also like to see companies discuss the implications of this data when explaining their capital expenditure strategy and risks to the business model. This would then link the numbers to the narrative and would demonstrate that they are actively managing this issue. The financial reporting bodies can also play a role in evolving their standards to address the carbon viability of reserves. We have identified a couple of areas such as IAS 36 or valuation approaches which may be fruitful. However, we would welcome your views on the best way of addressing these issues. The stock market regulators have a role in requiring these information from the companies. This serves two purposes. Firstly, it ensures shareholders have adequate information about how companies are managing the capital they are deploying on their behalf. Secondly, it provides the regulator with a thermometer for the market. Is it getting overheated with fossil fuels or is it heading in the right direction? Finally, there are some specialist areas for extractive companies which could be developed to address this issue. It has become standard practice in many markets for a competent person to provide an independent assessment of the level of reserves owned by a company. This gives investors some level of comfort that the company has what it says it has. Yet this will be based on particular assumptions around price and demand which may not reflect climate risk. It could be considered part of their professional duty to start including this aspect. The Greenhouse Gas Protocol provides methodologies for calculating and reporting emissions. They are currently looking at how to standardise reporting the level of emissions in reserves. This demonstrates a key challenge for this area. We're essentially asking for forward-looking information, which explains what happens if the future does not repeat the past. Given the revolution that is occurring in our energy systems, it's clear that one way or the other, the future will not repeat the past. We therefore think it's important that the world's accounting standards and financial regulations are ready to deal with that.